So you're looking for the best books to learn music theory with. Well, in this video, I'm going to review four suggestions that I've used throughout my own career to teach students of all levels. How's it going guys? Hugh Richardson from OnlineBassGuitar.com here. On this channel, I share lessons, tips and advice that I've learned from my own career as a professional bass player, musician, performer and teacher. So if this is your first time here, welcome and please consider subscribing. And at any point during this video, if you want to check out links to any of the books that I'm about to review, please check the description for full show notes and links to all the books that I'm going to look at in this video. So the first book I'm going to recommend is this. This is the AB Guide to Music Theory. It's written by Eric Taylor and it's a bit of a classic for people who are new to music theory. So the reason why I'm recommending this is it's perfect if you're completely new to music theory or if you're trying to find a theory book for your, your children, your son, your daughter who's taking piano lessons, violin lessons, bass lessons, whatever they're trying to study, and they need to know a bit about music theory. This book covers all the essential fundamentals of music theory. So just looking through the contents page here, you can see that you're going to learn about pitches, you're going to learn about rhythm, you're going to learn about scales, chords, time signatures, key signatures, how music notation works, all these really fundamentally important things that you need to know. And in terms of the level that this book goes from, this particular one goes from grade one up to grade five. So if you're unfamiliar with the grading system that we have here in the UK, it's basically talking about levels of complexity and difficulty. So one is the simplest, grade five is kind of just above the middle and grade eight is the highest. But a lot of music courses, particularly at things like AS level, GCSE level, which is kind of equivalent to middle school or high school in the US, will ask for things like grade five music theory. So this is a really important book to look at. Explanations in here are very, very clear, very, very accessible, very easy to understand. It's a very well written book. And this also comes in two parts. So part one, which I've got here is grades one to five. And then part two is grades sort of five or six up to eight. So I'd say part one of this book, but also part two are ideal for anyone who's new to music theory. So that might be you if you want to enroll on some kind of music course, or it would be perfect if you're looking for a book to get one of your children, if they're just starting bass lessons, if they're just starting piano, violin, singing lessons, something like that. And it doesn't really matter what instrument they play because music theory is universal to all instruments this book will work no matter what they're trying to learn. So if you want to read reviews from people who have purchased this book, I've left links in the description to parts one and two of this book. Go down there, check it out, check out what people think of it. But personally, I think it's a real great book. Okay, book number two, I'd say this is a bit more advanced. This is ideal for people who are towards the end of a high school or an A-level program, or perhaps even starting a degree level program and need to really get some more advanced music theory chops down. This is the Jazz Theory Book by Mark Levine. So as you can see, there's a lot more information on this. This is quite comprehensive, but one of the things that I love about this is not just how comprehensive it is, but also how much in this is relevant, not just to jazz, but to pretty much all forms of contemporary music. So when I say contemporary music, I don't just mean jazz, I mean things like pop, R&B, soul, some parts of rock music even. A lot of them borrow very heavily from jazz theory, so a lot of what you'd need to know will be rooted in this. Very, very important book. So the sort of things that you would learn from this book, you would learn about things like chord and scale relationships, so which chords work with which scales and vice versa. You'd learn about improvisation, you'd learn about reharmonization, which is the art of taking an existing set of chord changes and changing a few to give that chord sequence a new flavor. A lot of people think it's just a random choice, pick whichever chord you want, put it in there, but it's definitely not. There's a lot of very cool methods and ways you can do this. So. This book not only explains the theory, but what makes it a bit more advanced is it's also quite applicable. It's quite creatively minded, and the real idea behind this is that you actually apply it to either songs that you know or songs that you're writing. It's a very, very comprehensive, very, very useful book. And if you want extra endorsements as to just how good this book is, as soon as you open it up, you see you've got an endorsements page here. And check out some of the names who are saying how great this book is. You've got Bass Player Magazine, International Magazine, I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you've read it. But then people like Jamie Abersold, massive name in jazz and jazz education, thinks this book is fantastic. He says, in fact, and I quote, Mark has done it again and the music world is grateful. This book will help move understanding of jazz and theory into the 21st century. 
big accolade from a big name. So there's a lot you can look through in this book and if you click the link I've left in the description that will take you to the Amazon page and if you look on the picture of the product there's this little feature called the look inside button so if you click that it will actually allow you to flick through the first few pages of this book so you can have a read through, see what kind of things are covered, see if they're relevant to what you want to learn and hopefully get a good idea of if this book is for you. Now my third suggestion moves away from jazz slightly and this is edging more towards classical music and with a view of things like composition and arranging in mind. So third book is Harmony by Walter Piston. Now this book really does cover everything. Again I'd say it's suitable for people who are at the start of a degree program or perhaps people who are even going on to master's level, particularly for people who are studying things like arranging composition, music for film, music for television. And whilst it does cover some real basic fundamental stuff, which is very, very important, so things like intervals, scales, triads, keys, that sort of thing, it does get into very, very advanced territory, not just with the kind of theory that it covers, but also stylistically with how that theory is applied within things like classical and orchestral writing. Again, super, super comprehensive. The explanations in here are absolutely first class. Walter Piston, if you don't know him, is an absolute giant within the world of music theory, classical orchestral writing, that sort of thing. So you really are learning from one of the very best names in the business. And if you check the link I've left in the description, you'll find a link not just to this, but also to a workbook that goes with this. So there's a kind of sister workbook to this book. So you can learn everything that there is in the chapters, and then there are certain exercises that you can work through to learn to apply all of this stuff. Both books together, very, very comprehensive and very, very well worth the money. Now, last of all, I want to bring up a theory book that is a real personal favourite of mine, and that is The Jazz Harmony Book by David Berkman. Now, the reason why I really love this book is because it's applicable to so many people. I think it's certainly not something that I would suggest for a complete beginner, but if you are someone who is perhaps at the end of a high school or an A-level music course, or if you're a degree student, perhaps a master's student, or if you're a professional who perhaps has never really had that much chance to really dig into jazz harmony, there are a lot of things in here that are really going to be worth your time in reading and checking out. Again, it's got some endorsements inside the front cover, and if you can see, some of these are coming from huge names. So we've got Kenny Werner, I think, at the top massive name within jazz and jazz education and you can see a little bit further down let's see if i can point to the right one yep there we go actually an endorsement from mark levine so if you've written a jazz theory book and you're getting endorsed by the guy who wrote the definitive jazz theory book you've done a pretty good job this book will cover everything from chord functions basic reharmonization through advanced reharmonization moving through key centers, parallel keys. But my absolute favorite part of this book is right at the back where it's got a few chapters on how people who don't play the piano can apply all of their stuff and learn how to voice it and play it properly on the piano. Now, you might be there thinking, oh, I'm a bass player, why is this important to me? Why do I need to know about the piano? Well, if you're a music student, if you're a composer, or if you're someone who's just very serious about learning music theory, then learning the piano, learning a keyboard, is seen as almost a kind of an essential second instrument. A lot of music schools, a lot of universities will teach piano as a second instrument and it's not optional. Certainly when I was a student, it was not an optional class. Everybody had to take piano. So having some chapters on specifically chord voicing technique, incorporating a melody within a chord, how to play through a jazz standard, it's really, really valuable stuff. And of course, it's only going to make your piano playing better, but also your writing, your composing, your arranging, and also you'll have a much better understanding of the other instruments in a group that you play with. This book has really transformed the way I think about theory, the way I think about harmony. So if you want to read some reviews from people who have purchased this book, see what they think, click the link in the description and you can check them out there. So the big question I want to ask you is, which book do you think is most relevant for you? Are you someone who's just starting out with music theory and you think the AB guide would be much more useful for you? Are you someone who's really deep into orchestral music and you want to check out Walter Piston? Or do you really want to learn about jazz and you'll take one of the two jazz options? And of course, this is by no means a complete list. So do you think there's anything really important that I've missed? Do you think there's anything that I should add to this list? Whatever you think, leave me a comment below this video and tell me about it. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I put out videos just like this one every single week. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you in another lesson real soon. Take care.